Hello all. By now you've completed most, if not all, of the reading dealing with the Unified Transfer Tax System located in subchapter B of the Internal Revenue Code. I want to go over the general idea of the transfer tax system, which is located in chapters 11, 12, 13, and 14 of the Code. In particular, chapter 11 deals with estate tax, 12, the gift tax, 13, the generation skipping transfer tax, and 14 deals with a special valuation relief. So out of the three taxes, the estate tax is the primary tax where we are going to concentrate our efforts. And that's because the estate tax affects most people. There are going to be two terms that I want you to get familiar with. And those terms are inter vivos transfers and that's transfers between the living, basically transfers while alive, and testamentary transfers, which are transfers made by reason of one's death. The estate tax deals with testamentary transfers. Now when, when you have a deathbed transfer, that is basically an inter vivos transfer, obviously, they're still alive. So there may be part of those transfers that are a little more complex because it's occurring just before death, but they are in fact considered inter vivos transfers and they will most likely get pulled into the calculation of the gross estate, I mean the estate tax. So the inter vivos and the generation skipping transfer tax systems exist to basically maintain the integrity of the estate tax system. You'll get that when we finish going through this illustration. I'm basically just trying to get the concept in a nutshell to you, and then we're going to go over examples in week three, examples that are going to give you math calculations with numbers that will help you pull that concept into reality. So let's start off with the calculation. So if you go back to that course interview, I put a snapshot of it here for illustration purposes again. And the calculation of the estate tax starts off with the gross estate. And as you can see, you have a number of code sections that govern the various items that get that are um, going to be considered in the gross estate. A lot of those items we went through in week one. If we didn't cover them, we will be covering them in depth later. You, after starting off with the gross estate, you're going to subtract the applicable deductions allowable again by certain code sections. And again, we've already talked about in in very a very brief context these different types of deductions that are allowable, you know, in particular claim and expenses of the administration of the estate, losses during the administration, transfers to charity, marital transfers, etc. After you subtract that the deductions from the gross the gross estate you're going to derive at the taxable estate. And this is basically what is being taxed. This is the nuts and bolts of it all. Following the taxable estate are various adjustments, credits, and this section is all basically for the purpose of making sure that we are uniformly taxing the estate. And we're using all of the applicable items that affect the transfer tax in, in deriving at the net amount to be calculated. So let's start off with the first adjustment, and that's adjusted taxable gifts. Someone in our in our one of the discussion forums wanted to know what is considered an adjustable taxable gift. 
And basically, an adjustable taxable gift is a taxable gift that is made after 1976 that has not been pulled back into the gross estate. You start off with the taxable gifts, you calculate the gross gift tax on that amount, subtract out the available unified credit, and that enables you to derive at what's called the adjusted taxable gift. And the items that get pulled back into the gross estate are the amounts that adjust the gifts that are included in the computation. So it, in particular, it includes appreciation in the value of property, gifted property. We'll, we'll talk about that again a little bit later, but I didn't want to go to, through a lot of detail on this, but I wanted you to understand how it's basically derived. So you add to the taxable estate the adjusted taxable gifts, and that gives you a base for the purpose of computing your tax, at computing and deriving at the tax on the tentative tax base. Your tax on the tentative tax base is used, is calculated using a rate that is determined in the year of death. So for our purposes in the year 2013, the rate of tax is 40%. There's different amounts that may apply depending on various gifts that are given, but in the end, you're, you're going to be taxed on the amount that, ex, that exceeds the unified credit amount, which basically is $5 million. We haven't gotten down to the credit amount yet, but so you understand here on the tax, you're using the applicable rates that's based on the year of death, the rates in effect during that period of time. From that amount, that tax amount, you're going to subtract the tax that was computed on post 76 gifts. So these are gifts that occurred after 1976. When you're looking at the, the gifts on the, um, the tax on the post 76 gifts, what occurs in that calculation is you're looking at the gross gift tax less the available credit. And it really derives an amount that's considered a tax payable, but for illustration purposes here, it just says tax. I'm sorry, down here, it says tax. Tax on post 76 gifts. So we start off with this tax base, tax that's on the tentative tax base, we subtract the tax on post 76 gifts, and that gives you what's called your tax before you apply your credits. So let's go back to credits. I mentioned before that the credits are not going to exceed that $5 million statutory amount. The unified credit is not, I should say. And that applies across the board with the transfer tax, with the with transfers that are made. The reason this is called a unified transfer tax system is because we're trying to get everything to be uniform and taxed at the rate that's applicable at the date of death. And so everything after the taxable estate in here that occurs is uniformly pulling in gifts that may have been previously paid at a lower rate based on the date of the transfer and recalculating it, I mean, gifts and, you know, other applicable items, but basically the gifts and recalculating it using the rates as of the date, date and year of the death. And that's again for uniform purposes. In the end, 
this net tax liability is only going to be calculated overall on transfers made that are computed at 40, the 40% 40 tax rate with respect to the year 2013. So just so if you can get that one concept down that this section here represents the unification of the, tra the transfer tax system and it's designated to ensure that we are capturing the lifetime gifts given and making sure that we recalculate it based on current, not current, but the rates as a in the year of death. And that's why you are adding back the gifts and then you're recalculating the tax and then you're turning around and you're backing back out the tax that you paid previously when you filed tax returns for those gifts that were made during the transfer year. Hopefully that makes sense to you. It's just all again to ensure that you're being taxed at the marginal rates in effect during the year of death. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I want you to understand that. So tax is generated basically on anything that is above that $5 million statutory rate. rate. And keep in mind that the five million I use for simplistic purposes, but it's five million two hundred fifty thousand for the year two thousand thirteen, and it's five million three hundred and forty thousand dollars for the year two thousand fourteen with respect to the unified credit that you get. Five million dollar statutory amount with respect to the unified credit. So when you hear me saying five million, you're thinking, okay, but for two thousand four. 14, it's 5,340,000. Don't, don't get caught up in that. I just like to keep it simple. So finally, I just want to get to trust really quick so that because it's mentioned in your problems and you're going to be running across it when trying to decide if it goes into uh, an estate or not. So living trusts are also known as inter vivos trusts. And living trusts is property that is transferred during a lifetime. They can be revoked at any time before death and are typically set up to prevent, prevent a probate relating to trust assets. With that said, many times the assets in a revocable living trust will be includable in the gross estate. Another way said, the living trust is how trust provisions deal with the management of trust assets during one's lifetime and how managed after death. Code section 233 dealing with property that is includable, the interest in the decedent's uh, estate does not include living trust and that's because the trust controls where the property goes. However, living trust assets may be included in gross estates, the gross estate through other code sections like section 230, 2036 and 2038. So there you have it. The net estate tax liability calculation in a nutshell. If you don't have it, keep in mind, we're going to go through the examples in week three forum. And I believe once we go through three or four different examples, putting numbers down next to the um, items and pulling together the concept for you, it's going to become a lot more crystal clear. And if it doesn't, we'll do it again. So thank you, and I will see you next week.